This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. and 63 years ago today, the demise of Julius Caesar changed the course of history. Today, on this Ides of March, this virtual iRacing universe finds itself in a similar situation, as some of the top MX-5 assassins, all with their own visions of grandeur, long to be asked et tu brute, as they turn their weapons toward their current ruler, defending champion Robert Hartley. Fans await to see if Hartley returns to defend his crown, or if the satisfaction of a title one allows this champion, like Caesar in the arms of Cleopatra, to enjoy a been there done that hiatus. So let the next campaign begin. From Watkins Glen, it's time for the Advanced Mazda Cup 2019 Spring Season Opener, and you can see all the simulated MX-5 action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing eSport Network. Hello everyone and welcome! The hardest working man in sim race broadcasting, Joe Peak, joins yours truly, Phil Soups on to bring you our word's eye view. Sean Crackers Ambrose has director duties armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. Okay, whenever the schedule of any series takes me to Watkins Glen, the first question I ask is, what configuration? Boot or no boot, inner loop or no inner loop, Joe? What's today's layout? Today's layout is the boot layout. It's what modern sports cars run here with the inner loop added to the back stretch and the extra mile tacked on towards the latter part of the lap. That makes this the longest version you can run at three and a half miles. That's roughly five and a half kilometers for European viewers. What makes this track so distinctive though is that there's a mere 12 turns throughout the lap and very few of them are heavy braking zones. Because of that, you can expect most passes to be draft passes. The name of the game will be holding on for much of the lap and waiting for the run up the S's onto the backstretch to try and slingshot by. In these MX-5s, this Formula Formula 1 circuit uh, becomes more of a Talladega-esque affair. But to really show you what I mean about the consistent high speeds throughout this track, it's best to hop on board with the GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Watkins Glen. Down to turn one, you've got a great passing opportunity into the 90. Just be careful because the downhill braking zone makes it easy to get over ambitious into the corner. Now you've got a lot of paved runoff around the outside, but you really don't want to use it too much because you're going to need every ounce of momentum you can squeeze out of this little MX-5 as you climb back uphill. These S's are a lot steeper than they look on TV, and you're going to be flat to the floor not only through them, but also all the way down the backstretch. And that's where, if it were me, I wouldn't attempt to pass into one, but instead wait to get into the draft up here and slingshot by with ease. The only thing is, at the end of this straight is the inner loop. This allows you to try to outbreak your opponent if you aren't fully past them. But going too wide through these tricky chicanes is going to invite trouble. Make sure you get single file by the time you hit the apex. After that, you're dumped into the carousel, which has a surprising amount of banking for a road course. It's a real balancing game to make sure you get on the power early enough, but not too soon so that you don't smack yourself into the armco. Now we're headed back downhill again, and you're hit with the difficult braking of the chute. The car likes to understeer here, and you've also got a severe lack of runoff around the outside. Try your best to late apex it and carry your speed down to the bottom of the hill. Now we've hit the toe of the boot. This is another good place to try a pass, but what's tricky is that this hairpin requires getting your foot on the gas early because of the incredible incline on the exit. You're going to see drivers with bad runs look like they're standing still, and that is not good because the last place for a decent pass is coming up. It's the heel of the boot, and this bend is going to tempt people into turning in too early, which will badly upset the car. The curb to the inside just doesn't play nice with any car I've ever hit it with. After that, switch sides again to set yourself up for this off-camber left-hander that returns us to the main track. Getting the MX-5 to turn in and clip your apex here is like trying to feed a dog medicine. It's not impossible, but good luck. 
From there, it's a short stretch to Indianapolis, which also has a fair bit of banking. It's important to really get your car into that inside groove to carry your speed through this decently fast bend. Switch sides again and throw out the anchors one last time to slow it up for the final corner. The barrier right at the edge of the track makes this feel like a street course, so treat it with respect. Hopefully, you were able to keep the car whole, and as you come to the line, you finished a lap around Watkins Glen. My partner Joe Peak taking us a lap around Watkins Glen. All right, this being the opening round of the new season, we get the opportunity to go and look at how last season wrapped up. That would be the winter season. You can see right there, Robert Hartley picked up four wins over the 12 race schedule, and he was able to get the win comfortably 143 points ahead of the only other race winner on the top five. That would be Mike Dam. Now, Gene Fittis, David Pond, and Jordy Fike. Mike sneaking his way onto the graphic there at the very end. Round out the overlay. There were lots of winners. I think we had seven different ones, so hopefully we'll have that kind of season again. We'll see how it plays out, and we'll see if Robert Hart that comes back to defend his crown. Joe, let's talk a little bit about the details. Absolutely. This is the season opener. Fresh, clean slate for all these drivers. And this is these are short races in this series, if you're new to this. Only 25 minutes. Very much like what you'd see in sort of an SCCA club race with these MX-5s. The setups on the car are open, uh, but they do have an incident cap. Uh, in these cars, which basically means if you're not used to iRacing, if they have an off track, if they run into another car or spin or things like that, they collect incident points. When they get 17 of those, uh, they are disqualified right then and there. We have seen it come into play a couple times in this series, but it's not very often with how short the races are. Uh, for the points, they actually use the official iRacing points in this series, so we won't know exactly what they're going to earn until after all is said and done. And uh, Bill? Uh, with this being a uh, C level, a C license level race, they have no spare car to back them up. Oh, we love that rule. That's the way it should be. They're putting in their qualifying times right now. Quickly before they start to roll in, let's quickly look at the weather. Joe, see how that's going to play out today. What's it like in New York? Absolutely. Well, it is uh, relatively hot here yeah. for March, uh, especially on the track. It's not too bad air temperature wise, 88 degrees, a little steamy, but look at that track temperature, 112. They're going to be slipping and sliding, which really honestly means that a few of these corners, they've really got to float the cars and kind of dance them through because they can't uh, jerk the car around too hard. There is a little bit of wind, 11 miles per hour shouldn't affect things too badly, and it doesn't look like it's shifting that much, so it should be relatively doable. The main thing is just watching out for your tires and how much grip you have out there. Well, we talked about whether the defending champion was actually going to come back and defend. I can report that Caesar has indeed crossed the Rubicon. He is here, Robert Hartley. And not only is he here, but no surprise, he's right now at the top of the tentative qualifying grid, putting in a 210.783. Mike Dam's trying to do his best to uh, keep him honest. Now, uh, you can see up at the top, it is a three-tenths different difference, but Bill, it's really not going to matter too much as long as you could stay within the draft of the car ahead. Uh, some of the drivers were even telling us that they expect it just to be a train all the way back to the last car, and it'll all be down to who loses that draft at certain points. Uh, considering we've got a pretty large field, I do think they're going to spread out, but I imagine, I would estimate, we'll probably see as many as 10 cars uh, up in that top train as long as nobody breaks it up with an incident. This being an official iRacing series, we always get a few new drivers coming in to spice things up a little. Like, take a look at the number 14 car. Marcello Isubio. He's sitting third right now. Yeah, clearly a fast driver coming in. Yeah. Uh, he is a uh, Club Brazil, or excuse me, no, Iberia. So he's up a little bit late tonight uh, trying to compete with these guys. We'll see how he fares. They're running out of time, though. There's, these are long laps. You can see we've got some drivers who've yet to get a timing, actually. Yes, indeed. We have 18 drivers in so far. Looks like our field is about 22 cars as we had to split it up in two. 44 tried to sign up, split it up in groups of two. Here's one that's going to make a difference. Uh, I see Sonny Kanchin does not have a lap in yet, and that's not because he had an off. He just 
he hasn't put any lap in. Uh, so he must have gotten a late start, and he's got a hustle here. I think he can make it to the checkered flag, Bill, but he's really got to hope that he doesn't have an off track. He's working his way. He's out of the loop right now, coming into the, one of the toughest corners for me, corner number nine, this left-hander. Yeah, the left and a right-hander to the start finish. Go ahead. Yeah, the main reason that that left-hander is so tough, and I agree with you, it's, it's the hardest turn on the track. It's a little bit off-camber. There's a crest right as you're turning in, so you lose a lot of grip around there, and the car, especially this MX-5, can sometimes get loose uh, when you're trying to put the power down off of it. But let's see what he's got underneath him. Just, I think he's just going to make Boy, it. Boy, this is going to be really close if this one counts. He, did he get it in? Uh, no. He maybe got it oh. in, but it didn't count. He's going to be back in the back. So that's going to be fun to watch. All right, with qualifying in and a standing start, let's go ahead and give you the starting order right now. The front row is Robert Hartley and Mike Dam. Newcomer, Jonas Mumuludis is going to be inside of Marcello Isubito. The fourth, third row is going to be David Paton and George Fike. Spots seven and eight go to Dave, uh, Travis Wallace and Alex Albert. Jeff Tyler and Nick Hardy behind them. Joe? Alex Cofford will be starting in 11th. Adam McLeod will be next in in 12th. Then the next row has Justin Hall on the inside. Jake Johansson on the outside in 14th. Rui Kumbra uh, in 15th position. Caden Fien in 16th. Damian Rue will start P17 and Greg Savoy in 18th. Then, as you mentioned, Sonny Kanchin, first car without a lap time, starting in 19th. Luis Gonzaga Fijo, 20th, and only two other cars left, Lucas Loyarte and Andre Asioli, uh, starting 21st and 22nd today. If it was a normal length race, I would say don't count Sonny catching out, but that's a long way to go in only 25 minutes. He'll have his work cut out for him. All right, let's get this new season underway. It's springtime. Let's go ahead. We got 12 ready to go this springtime. Going to run us all the way through, I think, probably all of March, April, May. Robert Hartley going to be sitting up on the pole. Your defending champion, Mike Dam, race winner from last time out. Travis Wallace sits in seventh. He won last season. And as I scan down, other than the Sunny Kenshin, way down in the back, those are the only race winners that are here today with us from last season. Good to see the Sheriff, Jordy Fike, coming back with a good qualifying spot outside of row three. Looks like everyone's taking their spot now. Engines beginning to rev. One foot on the gas, one foot on the brake, the other foot on the clutch. Gather up the chicken steak, covering down the cows. The horses are out of the barn, and we start a new season with the defending champion, Robert Hartley, out in front. Heading toward corner number one, Mike Dam in second position. In third spot, it's going to be Unus Lutus, David Baton, and Marcello Isabio. Pretty clean start, good run through the first corner. That can sometimes cause problems, but the fact that they've got that runoff and you can really use it well in these cars, it looks like everybody just spread out there to make sure that they didn't have any silly mistakes at the start. And already, we're seeing the top guys get in, a, in line. Oh, they're coming down here. Moon Ludo's had a great run in third. He's going to back out, though. The front three trying to gap themselves a little bit. Eusebio in back in fourth position. Being challenged by Paton. The back half of your top ten, Travis Wallace, Jordy Fike, Jeff Taylor, uh, Tyler, Alex Albert, and Alex Coford. Her top split. They were very, very polite at the start, even into the inner loop, which is another danger zone at this track, Bill. Uh, everybody pretty much got single file. There was a few challenges, but no one was doing anything crazy. their way down into the toe now. It is still the top 10 running in the same order that we talked about. One Making driver, a little bit of a move back there, Adam McLeod. The driver I want to watch out for is uh, Jeff Tyler because I think I saw him make a jump start. Uh, I'll be curious to see if he has to duck into the pits due to a black flag. Right now he's sitting in eighth, but at one car in the middle seemed like they got off the line a little too quickly. Back up front where we'll watch Hartley Dam and Mutalutus continue to race safely. 
Boy, I didn't see a single incident on that first lap. I might have missed one, but I think they were clean. Yeah, it, like I said, I'm really surprised at how polite it is, because usually when you get top split, uh, drivers tend to be a little bit more aggressive, but I guess everybody kind of knows the deal at tracks like this, especially guys who race in things like the MWT, where they understand it's not necessarily smart to try and throw the race away. You, you're going to get opportunities with the draft right here, coming out of the 90, up the hill. Watch them all come back together now. Nice and clean so far. Let's check in on Sonny Canchin. He's up to 13th spot. He's made up uh, only five spots. Right now he's behind Rui Coimbra, uh, the number 17 car down the backstretch, already looking inside. He's probably going to try and outbreak him, but there's surprisingly little breaking into this corner. And still, Rui is going to let him through. Not sure if that's due to reputation or just uh, Sonny being much better on the brakes. Next on is Hitler's Adam McLeod, who has about a half second lead. Oh, and did Dime or uh, Dam take away the lead from Hartley? Yeah, while well, we were watching Sonny catch him, it was uh, Mike Dam made the move. And it was right down, he did it on the outside going into the bus stop. Actually got it done before he got there. Let's go ahead and take a look at it again pass for the lead it's, this it was might, nicely done he got there be yeah go ahead. yeah i was gonna say this might be a good example of what i was talking about where drivers you know, eh, it's not really worth fighting so here's yeah all right so he's got the run he's looking to the inside oh, looking to the outside and yeah just pulls over lets him through and slots back into line this is this is a move that i expect to see a lot in these 12 laps So Dam is our leader now. What that has allowed, though, Marcello Isubio now is back up in fourth within shouting distance. David Paton hanging in there as well. They begin to gap themselves a little bit from Travis Wallace back in six, trying to get on the tail of them. He's about a second back, which actually does give you a little bit of the draft. Now, it's not going to be super effective. He's really going to have to hustle in the rest of the track because if he starts to get farther behind uh, at that point, he'll probably lose this train. Right on board with Marcello. A little action going on in front of him there. A little bit of shuffling around, but I mostly think it's just positioning the card. You're going to see Hartley down to the inside. The exact same move that happened to him. Except it looks like Dam's yep. going to go back to third. Mubaludis comes through now, moves up into second position. Dam drops back into third. This is a boon for Marcelo as well as Paton. Both of them are now right up with them. Let's go to 11th position, car number two. This is Sonny Kanchin. He's on the move. He's got Colford in front of him. I think he's going to get him pretty soon. He may be in a two for here as he works on Jeff Tyler. coffer has got the inside, but he doesn't have the bravery. The question is, can Sonny get the power down soon, soon enough off this corner? The track kind of falls away from you on the outside of the chute, and he's managed to do it. You can see it wasn't really a slam dunk. He had to really fight around the outside. So he gets that done. He'll get Tyler here pretty soon. Going to jump you down a little bit. Let's go up to seventh position. Talk about Jordy Fike ahead of Alex Albert. Yeah, Jordy is another one that's really in kind of a danger zone. He's starting to lose Travis Wallace, uh, who we mentioned is kind of in a no man's land. Jordy's got to, to start getting up to the back of him soon here if he wants a chance to fight for the win in this race, which might sound weird coming from seventh place, but. As we've seen, uh, a lot can change around over the course of this race just due to that draft. It's, when I say Talladega, I really mean it's like Talladega for these cars. Right on board with Jordy. You can see just ahead of the way up there, the five-car train that leads this field. Hartley, Hubaludus, oh, sorry, Hubaludus. Damn. It's an understandable Zubium. mistake. Yeah, come on then. Hey, you know, Joe, you talked about Travis Wallace being in no man's land, but little by little, he's getting back to Baton. It won't be long, I think, we can make this a six-car battle. Yeah, he's remember I said it, 
it was it was one second. There have been times it's down to seven tenths. It's back up to almost nine now, so it's kind of yo-yoing. We're gonna ride on board of him, see if he gains it all. This will certainly help. We see that two wide situation. The taunt and uh, Eusebio, uh, they, if they, oh, and they're gonna go single file. See, if they were gonna try and fight it out on their way in, they would lose a lot of time to Wallace, but uh, he did gain a little bit, It's uh, but it's not significant. Yeah, that, but oh, he, he's definitely coming though now. It was, the momentum is there. He's down to about a half a second now. The real difference came in the bus stop. He just was fantastic through there. Yeah. That's what I was talking about earlier. I, I found you really just, you have to be, you know how they talk about drivers driving with their fingertips. That's kind of what you got to do there. Just gentle movements floating the car through as we got to battle for the lead. It is well. There it is. It's Mumaluda's out in front right now. Damn, watching from third. Hardly would like it back though. I just want to update one thing that I mentioned earlier on in the race. Jeff Tyler did not have a penalty. He's not had to come in. So, thank goodness I was wrong. He did not jump start. We have everybody still in the race. Let's check back in on Jordy Fike. Now, remember this battle we were watching with Fike and Albert? Well, Fike has left Albert a. a behind he's trying to stay on the back of Wallace maybe to get to the front guys and so now Albert we go back to eighth position ah, here comes Sonny Captain Joe can Sonny get to the lead pack maybe uh, I don't know if it's really a maybe I think he's gonna get to the lead pack <laughs> that's probably gonna happen uh, Sonny's got the pace I mean I'm looking at uh, his best lap at 210 2 compared to the best lap of our leader right now, which is a 2.10.5. He's got three tenths up on the car that's leading the race. So as he takes this spot over the likes of Alberts, I'm pretty certain he's gonna be getting in the mix. He is up to eighth. One of the advantages of covering this series a lot and getting to know the drivers, we were able to focus in on him and watch him do what he does. Hey, but how about Alex Albert though? He's not giving up though. But look at this one. Look at this battle a little farther back for 12th. Yeah, Coimbra, McLeod, and Tyler all together. This can get messy when you get three cars trying to position themselves. You always got to be aware of where everybody is because you can make a sudden move and suddenly take all three of you out. And we got a fourth coming in. That is Nick Cardi back there watching. McLeod was the last car in line until Nick got up there. Nice four-car battle, a little bump draft going on, and here comes McLeod trying to work around the outside of Cumbia. Oh, but he's got to check up uh, Coimbra. Unfortunately, he got a little hot in the first part, and he had to slow it up in the second part of the inner loop. Now, it's not going to lose him the draft, but you can see the kind of complications that can create. I think we got Hartley back up at the front now. Let's jump back in up front. Hartley up in front. Damn. Mubaludas, who was the leader, is now back to third position. Yeah, back hard. at fourth, though, here, or fifth position. Baton and Wallace in a little bit of a battle. Yeah, they got to be careful about how much they battle, though. You got to stay with this top four group. It's really, it's fighting all those racer instincts. It's just playing patient, waiting for the time. Uh, that is really best for you to try and go on the attack. Now, you do want to try and position yourself. You can obviously uh, overtake first or second with a good draft. Third is going to be a much harder ask. So eventually, you do got to start to climb. But we've got 14 minutes. We're not even halfway through this race. So I'm pretty sure these drivers are thinking long term. I wonder Ooh. if... That was Wallace into the wall, I'm pretty sure, on the, the final corner. Gonna now, look at this one more time on board with Wallace right in front of Jordy Fight. Go, Joe. This this looks like a gentle brush, but Bill, this is so so important because uh, if you damage the aerodynamics on this car because it doesn't have that much grunt, uh, you can wind up really having to almost rely on the car ahead for the draft at that point. Uh, you can't go past them because you're going to be slower in a straight line, and he definitely hit the wall as we saw on board in that replay. Come back, and boy, look at them coming at you there. They were kind of weaving at the straightaway, coming down. They all get back into line right now. Joe, I almost wonder, if I didn't know better, I almost wonder if they didn't get together and say, you know, Canchin is coming. Let's put the pole sitter out in front and see if we can keep some distance <laughs> from the Australian driver. 
Who is that that just got a cut course in the inner loop, though? Looks like Rui Coimbra, uh, once again, just... He, you got to resist that temptation, Bill. You want to, even though you got to try and float the car in as fast as you can, you do have to slow it up because uh, it'll cost you a lot of lap time and possibly a position because you're trying to collect the car and if you swing wide in the outer loop, uh, you can find yourself with other guys running down the inside of that banked corner and just breezing by. Great racing all the way through. Boy, you can stay. These guys right here can put on a show all to themselves. Let's drop back to, to 16 spot. Give a little love to these guys. Caden Ben, Justin Hall, Damian Roof. Nice little battle. They were a little more aggressive a second ago. Just give them a little screen time. We see you guys. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, and, and if, if it gives you any idea of, it, of what it takes to try and get into this top split, I'm seeing guys as far back as 15th. Uh, that's Lucas Loyart. Uh, with a 4,000 I rating. <laughs> yeah, that's what's interesting about the way they scored this. You get points depending on the strength of field. The 3,300 yeah. SOF. Yeah. That is steep. They have drop races, but you don't want to miss the ones that are paying big money. All right. Hartley or pole sitter up in front, Mike Dam behind him. I was watching Dam a little while ago. He got up behind Hartley and decided not to go around him, but gave him a little bit of a push. This time, I think he's going to go for the move. This is definitely a dance move, though. You, you, you saw Hartley just drift out to the outside and say, after you, and Dam easily took the spot. Some of them getting a little bit greedy with that grass on the exit of the inner loop, though. Lucky none of them got a cut course. And Joe, as, as so often happens uh, when a driver comes through the field like Canton, it looks so easy early on, but then you start to get up where the pace is a little tougher. Things start to slow down a bit. He's back there working in uh, eighth position right now. Yeah, he's really pedaling it. He's not the reeling him in too fast, but he has caught Jordy Fike, and this could be important because Fike's almost almost like a stepping stone yep. for him. He uses the draft to get past him, and then he's got a, a nice little uh, nice little draft from the next car up. If, if Jordy was a little bit farther away, or if Jordy just wasn't there, he'd be pushing a lot harder to try and catch these guys. But the draft just makes it so much easier to gain lap time. It is that five cars that have been up in front the whole time, and then Travis Wallace, who's been doing his very best to get there, put it off the wall a little bit, but he's almost got to the front five. And then you got Fike and catch him. He's still He's trailing Dam. It is Dam, Hartley, Ludus, Eusebio, who's been back there watching. Eusebio's been watching the whole thing the whole time. And then back in fifth, David Patan, a veteran. Oof, I'm surprised Dam is not losing the lead here because he came in very hot on that final corner. I'm surprised he uh, didn't have to do a big checkup. Let's go back to seventh real quick. Jordy Fight gets overtaken by Canchin. Sonny using all of the tarmac there to get woed up. That's not the worst thing that the cap into the sheriff. If he can hang on to the back of a uh, Sonny Catch Me If You Can't, he might be able to pull him up to the front. That would certainly be my strategy. I wouldn't fight him hard at all. I'd, I would let him through and, and like you see Jordy doing right now, just get on his coattails. Oh, but now we've got a lot of action happening in the top five. Hartley moves to the end, but they are scrambling. Lewis now in the second position. They were two by two there for a while. Dam in third. Subio back there in fourth. And riding that, on board with Dam. You know how last time I was saying it looked like a dance move? That was much more of a mosh pit. Yeah. They, they, they really were not organized on that one. That's going to cost them time. You could see at the, tra uh, the tail of the train that Wallace actually caught them because of that. Definitely the biggest fan of that nonsense that was going on in front of him. He is there now. One and a half seconds between him and Sonny Kanchin. And the reason that we're seeing that, look at the time on the, the, the upper left. Only eight minutes left. 
Because these are over two minutes lap, you're looking at only four laps left to go. So now is the point where you, uh, I'd say that these drivers, based on the body language of the cars, are saying, okay, I need to get myself exactly where I want to be so that I don't have to scramble and make foolish moves towards the end. Hardly Mumulutus and Dam racing with one, two, three, but it is now a six car battle. Although the front three have visions of separating this a bit. Looking back at this, three cars now in a battle for fourth position. The guys are hoping to hang on to the front three. Subio, Baton, and Wallace. I don't think they're in any jeopardy of getting left behind there. I, I don't think so. It's it's only it's only six tenths between uh, Marcelo and Mike Dam at the moment, and you're going to see that all gained right back here, a little wide of the apex for uh, for Hartley coming through the 90. You can see how wide he had to go because of that. I hate to hammer this point home, but the interval that is important is 1.2 seconds between Wallace and Sonny Canton with just under seven minutes of racing to go. Ooh, are we gonna see three wide? Damn thing's better of it. Okay. He's considering it for yeah. a moment. Mumulutus is gonna get a good entry into the bus stop. He goes through there, through the inner loop without a problem. Look at the run though that Hartley gets coming out. Look at that maroon car in the background, Sonny Kanchin really loved all that action. He was able to take it so much faster than all the cars ahead. He is now seven tenths behind. I This isn't a Sonny Kanchin is coming. Sonny Kanchin is yep. here. Damn, misses the apex there and loses a lot of ground to Hartley and Mumalutis. Able to hang in there. It is a six car battle. It is now a seven car battle. His four wheels scare the cockatoos from Kintor East to Newman Dew. Sonny Ketchin has joined the hunt up front. Now this would be curious. This is one of those few places where you can really try and outbreak someone is into the heel of the boot. But Hartley, who had a very good run, elected not to take it. He's just going to sit behind. I almost looked like he gave Ionis a, 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 a bump draft on his way to there. Yeah, you have to be careful, sir. It's an incident, Captain. You can find yourself in trouble <laughs> just from those bumps. That made a couple drivers uh, upset. I think it was at uh, uh, Interlagos last yep. season, wasn't it? Oh, Hartley is Whoa. really new. It's Mumulutus who's loose, and he gets tapped by Hartley. End of the wall. That is him out of the running for the win, but he could still come back and finish this race. Oh. And, and I, I think I would not put any blame on Hartley. He was oh. trying to stay out of it. This was all just uh, Mualutis getting loose on his own. Yeah. The last thing Robert Hartley wanted to do was, was make contact with his nose. It was such a gentle tap, though. I think his MX5 is going to be okay. We're going to look at it one more time, one more time. See him struggle on this one. Oh, he took a little too much curb on the inside, judging by that replay. That's what set him off come back live the front three cars now fight going underneath this is Mike Dam and now here's making his presence known David Baton getting into the mix and uh, Marcelo actually was having a bit of a headache back there you, you see he's lost a little bit of a gap that's because Sonny Kanchin tried to force it too wide into the inner loop and unfortunately didn't get the spot but clearly he's eager to try to make up these positions. Uh, we're actually, are we gonna get two to go at the line here? I think we are. And with that, Mike Dam opens up the biggest lead of the race. David Patton, I wonder if Hartley's car is, didn't pick up a little bit of straight line speed problems there with the tap that he had on Mumulutas. It's very, very possible. Yeah, we're seeing some and that can affect you. It, now, it might not look like much, but even one or two miles an hour, Bill, uh, can make life very difficult. Damn, up in front by about eight or nine car lanes. Baton doing his very best to get there. How about Travis Wallace now in fourth? You 
Subio has the sunny Canton behind him. Canton trying to work his way through. Running out of time with just about three minutes of racing to go. And because of how little organization there is up at the top now, George Fike has actually caught them somewhat. Uh, we could come back to a seven car train. Now, I've been noticing something throughout this race, and it's nothing new, honestly. Sonny Kanchin's connection has not been the best. This is not the sort of track that you want that because of how close the racing has to be. That's not going to make it fun for the other drivers around him if it comes down to some really door-banging battling in the final lap. Might also be a reason for his problem late to the qualifying. We've had one Ooh. driver that has had a Jeff Tyler got together, made contact with a... Lucas Loyarte. Yeah. Ooh, it was a hard hit, too. Take a look at that one. Tyler in the blue car. Just not enough room. Yeah, I, I kind of put that one on Tyler. He started to squeeze him and just did not give him enough room. Okay, we come back live again. Let's go up front. Dam Hartley is in second. Baton has now fallen back to third. Kanchin is blinking horribly. In fact, he's gone now from me. I wonder if he's oh he's back. Before. Yeah, and he's side by side. This is this is really awful for Wallace because he won't always know where exactly Sonny is. I think Zach Sunday was actually inside the cockpit with him there for a while. Ooh, he, oh, yeah, he, he should have made some net code contact with him there from what I saw on my screen, but did not. I don't I don't blame Sonny for trying to get positions here, but when you've, you've got a bad connection, and I hope people have been trying to tell him that, it's it's usually not considerate to try and race other people that hard. Yeah, I'd like to tell you where he is right now, but on my screen he's gone. Whoop, he's back, he's gone. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. But up front we're gonna focus our attention. I don't think catching is gonna be an issue. It's gonna be Dam and and uh, Hartley now. Let's see what type of straight line speed Hartley has. We are on the white flag, the final lap. I'm gonna wonder about Paton. I wonder if he's a dark horse here, he's just playing possum the whole race and, and waiting for the right time. The fact that he's now up with these top three and and sitting in a decent position, I think he could spoil the fun. Here comes Hartley, gonna make the move. He's got the momentum. Going to get that done before they get to the inner loop. We've seen that pass before. Now let's see what type of drive they get off of here, Joe. Looks pretty good from everybody. And and one of the drivers who was talking to me said that that's the move you want to make. And then from there, you should be able to defend. But I'm curious to see if Mike Dam is going to going to feel the same way or if he's going to try and get back by Hartley. Head down into the toe now. 180 degrees right hander. He handles it really well. Damn right behind. Boy, I don't know if there's going to be enough passing opportunities here. You might want to make it down into the heel. But Damn doesn't have anything for him. No, he is not nearly close enough. Hartley knows it. That's why you saw him go back to the racing line even after a defensive move. So it's, it's going to be incredibly tough for Mike to do anything from here on out. None of these last three corners have hardly any braking. In fact, you don't brake at all in the penultimate turn. Final corner coming up right now here in just a minute. They go through the left-hander. One more after this one as they head to corner number 11. Damn about a car length back. Needs a good drive off of here. Start finish line comes about halfway down the straightaway. I don't think Dam's going to get there. He's going to be lucky if he can hold off Baton for second. Give the win to Robert Hartley, your defending champion. Mike Dam gets second. David Baton, the final podium spot. Wallace barely beat Kanchin 
but Sonny, how about this? Credit to him from 19th on the grid to six. That's a pretty good climb. Let's go to let's go to 14th. This is Caden Bin trying to hold off Andre Asielli. Asielli is not an hour long enough straight. All behind him, Rue Savoy. All right, the racing is over here at Watkins Glen. What a great show it was, but our broadcast is far from enough. We'll take a short break. We'll come back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the game. Back Cyberspace into your place via iRacing Esports Network. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Advanced Monster Cup, the Strength of Field event season opener here from Watson's. So let me take a second to quickly talk about the iRacing Esports Network, the best of the best in the iRacing World Championship, as well as many top private leagues like the one you're watching right now are showcased right here on the iRacing Esports Network. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe. GSRC is proud to be part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. All right, let me run down the finishing order here of this opening round race from Watkins Glen. He started on the pole. He didn't stay up front. He fell back a little bit, but when it came to the checkered flag, he was first to get there. Robert Hartley. Mike Dam was right behind him in second. David Baton in third. Rounding out your top five, Marcella Isubio and Travis Wallace. Back half of your top ten, Sonny Kanchen came from 19th to 6th. George Fike, Alex Albert, Alex Coford, and in 10th position, Lucas Lorte. Joe? Uwe Lutis, unfortunately, even though he started in third, wound up in 11th. His little uh, spin and touch with the wall and midway through the race sent him backwards, and that was the best he could recover to. Adam McLeod was behind him in 12th with Nick Carty in 13th. Then it's Caden Bean finishing P414. Andre Asioli, another driver who gained a number of positions, started 22nd and finished 15th. Justin Hall was 16th and Damian Rue was 17th. Then you've got Greg Savoy in P18. 19th goes to Luis Gonzaga Filho. Jeff Tyler finishes one lap down 20th because of that late ra race accident. Re Coimbra, 21st. He was DNF. Same thing with Jake Johansson finishing 22nd. That's your uh, 22 car field today, Bill. Looks like I'm going to have the opportunity to talk to our race winner and defending champion, Robert Hartley. Let's bring Bob down in here and talk to him. Robert, nice job. A uh, little bit of an incident there where Mumalutis got loose in front of you. Did it damage your 
don't think it had much of an effect, but yeah, I probably had a little damage. I tried to check up and miss him, and then it just slapped back on him, and I got into him. Okay, well, you picked right up where you left off last season, but you had to work on this one. They were around you all the time. What was your strategy? Joe was talking. He thought maybe leading out of the inner loop was the way to go. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, that's definitely the strategy. You just got to race hard up front and put yourself in position to stay in the top one, two, or three spots and just hope it works out for you, and tonight it did. There was some swapping going on up front, a little bit of dancing, then there was a little bit of racing. Is that how you took it? There were some passes that were just kind of you go next, but other ones uh, you had to defend? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, if you go too wide through the bus stop, you're just going to slow both of you down, so it's better just to let somebody go and then try to race them the next lap up the hill. All right. Well, you picked right up where you left off last season. They've got some new names in here and some that are missing, so it's going to be a hard back-to-back -back championship for you. Good luck the rest of the Thanks, guys. Robert Hartley, our race winner today and defending champion. Joe? Well, I've got our fifth-place finisher and fellow Club Carolina driver Travis Wallace with us. Travis uh, certainly had an interesting end of the race, but before we get to that, uh, let's talk about the middle of the race because you suddenly found yourself almost losing uh, the tail of the top train. Were you at all worried when you started to see that gap of about one second, or did you feel confident that you could reel them in? Uh, well, I, I don't know if y'all saw it or not. Probably missed it. It wasn't a big one. I tapped the wall coming out of the last corner, and I think he we got saw my that. head. <laughs> Yeah, it was, that was when I started falling off, uh, but I just had to calm myself down, get back in it, and, and try to catch up. Yeah, you, you definitely uh, flirted with disaster there with that light brush. Now, let's talk about the end where you had a, a, a hell of a battle with Sonny Kanchin, but it looked like for much of the time you couldn't tell where he is. Oh, yeah, my spotter was going crazy. Car right, car left, clear. I, I was just doing my best to try to stay in the middle, and I, I couldn't see him at all. He was He was a ghost. Still, you managed to come out with the top five and what was a, a nearly 3,400 SOF uh, race. That's a pretty good haul of points. What does that say to you for the remainder of the season? Are, are you going to try and show up every week to compete for uh, uh, championship positions, or is this more of a just-for-fun thing for you? Uh, no, after last season, I surprised myself uh, with how I ran and how well I ended up at the end of the season. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to this season. Uh, with it being broadcast, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of drivers better than me that's going to pop up this season, but we'll see what happens. Well, you made good at a track that allows uh, even drivers who might lack pace to stay with the top group and potentially win with a nice top five here today. Uh, we hope to see you next week at Nürburgring. All right. Thanks, guys. Bill? Okay, with that out of the way, I'm going to get a chance to talk with a man who was leading for a while. Ionis Mumaludis. Ionis, you have a copy? Yep, I have a copy loud and clear. Okay, let's start with the most important thing. Let's get the pr proper pronunciation of your last name. I'm going with Mumaludis. How did I do? Mumulidis. Mumulidis, okay. Is that, is that, you have a Greek heritage That's there? Greek, Jay? yes. Okay, but you race out of, uh, you race out Germany. of uh, Germany, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to the let's get to the race on the track right now. You were out in front. I thought you were gonna catch it there for a minute before it got away. From you. I certainly felt like I was going to catch it. I had it in my hands, but then suddenly the the tires started to to slip, and I went towards the other way. I don't know if I could have ca caught it, but um, unfortunately, I had a train behind me, and I really couldn't go anywhere. So I was um, on the unlucky receiving end of this. Um, it's it's definitely hard to lead a race with all these cars behind you, um, and uh, mistakes happen. I run a little bit too narrow on the um, on the inside curb, and my car just went. I don't want to get too personal, but what allows you to be up in the middle of the night on a what would it be? I guess a Saturday morning in Germany. Uh, I love racing with these people. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of fast people in here. Robert Hartley, Sonny Kanchen, um, and it's just so lovely that it's worth to stay up. Well, man, we are happy to have you, and we hope that you uh, invest in some coffee so that we can see you racing in some more. Before we got eleven more to go. Yep, 
I will definitely try my best. Jonas Mumaludas, who was leading for a while, had a chance at a podium, had to settle for a 10th position. We look forward to seeing you race again. All right, Joe, I think that's going to do it here for us on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We're going to wrap it up. Hope everyone enjoyed the show. I sure did have a good time broadcasting it. Let's go ahead and thank the people that made this possible. Let's start with everybody in the Advanced Boston Cup community, especially the Sheriff, Jordy Fike, for supporting this broadcast. On screen now are just some of the equipment and software used to string cyberspace into your place. The original music, well, that's courtesy of Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde. The Advanced Boston Cup returns in one week for round two. That's going to be from the Grand Prix Circuit at the ring gsrc via iesn will be there to bring you all the action hey next up for iesn on the for them well that's going to be gsrc's coverage of tomorrow's opening round of the grand prix legends my partner joe peak and johan vandeville scheduled to call the action there and joe you won't have to travel far because that all takes place right here at the glen that broadcast goes live 9.30 Eastern Time. Sliding across your screen now are just some of the upcoming broadcasts. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. If you want to know more about GSRC? GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Gram. If you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and hit that big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, Joe, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. As it was defending champion Robert Hartley picking up the first win of the season here at the Glen. But that's it. We're off to have fun. Storm of the Castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.